you sure this is the right place? Trust me, if you want to make a video about passing a driving test, this is the place to go. I'm a little nervous. Oh, don't worry. DMV people are friendly. Oh, they can keep you from getting your license, though. Only if you're not a safe driver. The manager's expecting us. Oh, let's ask that person over there. I agree. Let's send this to Sacramento. Thank you. Hi, we're looking for Miss Hunter. That's me. How can I help you? We're making a video for the Foothill High television class. Oh, yes. Mr. Thompson's class. Mm -hmm. He told me you'd be here. You're... I'm Sandy, and... Hi, I'm Brendan. Nice to meet you. I'm Melissa. What can I do for you? Well, we'd just like to show people how to prepare for a driving test. Excellent idea, Sandy. We could use a video like that. Let's go talk to one of my examiners. Okay. Hi, Dan. Hi, I have some visitors who would like to talk to you. Great. This is Sandy. Hi. Hi. And this is Brandon. Hello. Hi. They're making a video about the driving test. They'd like some tips on how to prepare. Sure. What part of the test? Road signs, lane markings, speed control? Yeah, sounds good. Turns and intersections? That too. Safe driving practices? Whatever you have time for. Tell you what, how about if I show you what you need to know? Great. How do we do that? Let's go for a drive. Okay. Where's your car? That way. Great. Thanks, Melissa. I'll see Let's you guys go. later. Bye. Bye, Ms. Hunter. Before we hit the road, let's make sure your car is safe. Why don't we get in? Looks like you've got good tires, two rear view mirrors, brake lights, front and rear turn signals, seat belts, an emergency brake, a horn, and a clean windshield with no obstructions or cracks. You need two more things. Gasoline and roadmap? That would help. But on the legal side, you need current registration and proof of insurance. On the safety side, you also need to be familiar with your vehicle. So can you show me your headlight switch, windshield wipers, front defroster, emergency hazard lights, and do you know your arm signals? Of course. There's right, left, and stop. Excellent. I think we're ready to go. Let's look at lane markings. White lines divide lanes where traffic travels in the same direction. Yellow lines mean traffic travels in opposite directions. The type of yellow line tells you what you can or cannot do. One broken line means cars can pass in either direction. A solid and broken line means passing is permitted in one direction only if you're on the side with the broken line. A solid double line means no passing in either direction. Never drive on the left side of a solid double line unless you're making a left turn, you're in a carpool lane, or you are instructed to do so. Double double yellow lines are another matter. Consider them the same as a raised barrier. 
never cross unless there is a designated opening. Let's say you're on a road that only has white lines. What does that mean? Um, all traffic will be traveling the same way. It's a one-way street. Very good. Now, there are a few specialized lanes you should know about too. Bike lanes are generally for bicyclists or pedestrians if there are no sidewalks. Never use a bike lane unless you're about to make a right turn, enter a driveway, or to park if permitted. There are several types of carpool lanes. The markings tell you when it's legal to enter or exit. Check the signs to make sure you meet the occupancy requirements or have a special decal before entering. Center left turn lanes keep traffic flowing and prevent rear end collisions. Always use them for left turns when available. On a two lane road, if you are driving slowly and traffic behind you cannot pass, use a turnout lane when available. You must do this when five or more cars are behind you. And be aware of markings that let you know that a lane is about to end. There are three types of road signs. White regulatory signs are ones you must obey. They let you know how fast you can go, when it's okay to turn or not to turn, and when you shouldn't enter a street. Yellow warning signs tell about potential hazards up ahead. They let you know when cars may be merging into your lane, when there's a cross street or signal light ahead, or when you should slow down. Highway construction and maintenance signs are orange. Watch for highway workers and construction equipment ahead. There may be a temporary speed change, road or lane closure, or a hazard. Look for highway workers who may direct you to different driving lanes. Go slow, but don't stop to watch. Obey the flaggers. They may have you driving on the opposite side of the road. In many areas, traffic fines are doubled when you're driving through a construction zone. Informational or guide signs come in different colors. They make it easier to find destinations, points of interest, and important services. There are some really important signs that have their own unique shape to make them more identifiable. See if you can tell what they are. So, how do you determine your speed? It's easy. I just look to see what the sign says. There's a little more to it. Posted speeds are maximum limits based on ideal conditions, good visibility, dry pavement. To paraphrase the California law, look at what's around you and use your common sense. Slow down in bad weather, in heavy traffic, or when there's a hazard up ahead. It's also dangerous to drive much slower than the flow of traffic. You should stay close to the speed limit if conditions are good. If you need to drive slower, Make sure you're in the right lane so others can pass. Sometimes it's hard to find a sign to know how fast to go. True. Some areas don't have signs because they have a legally mandated speed limit. Residential areas, business districts, and school zones where children are present have a maximum limit of 25 miles per hour unless signs say otherwise. Blind intersections have limited visibility from side to side. The speed limit here is 15 miles per hour, even when no signs are present. Be careful when you can't see what's coming. Did you notice how I came to a complete stop? Very good. Now, who goes first? You would have to ask. It's not that hard. Most intersections use the same right-of-way principle. At an uncontrolled intersection, yield to any vehicle that is already in the intersection or that arrives before you. At T intersections, 
through traffic has the right of way. Always yield to pedestrians. At a stop sign intersection, again, yield to cars that are already in the intersection or that arrive before you. If two cars arrive at the same time, the car on the right has the right of way. Be sure to check if cross traffic also stops. If it's your turn to go, take it. Being overly cautious slows traffic down. On the other hand, don't get upset if someone goes ahead of you when it's your turn. Just let it go. You know, these things are confusing. I'm not quite sure what to do. Roundabouts are like other intersections. When entering, give the right of way to any traffic already in the intersection. Also yield to any bicyclists or pedestrians. Hey, that was kind of fun. <laughs> Very good. I'm glad you stopped behind the line. <laughs> Thanks. I'm not sure what to do at signal lights sometimes. There's a lot to watch for. Here are the basics. It's legal to enter an intersection on a green or yellow light. Yellow simply warns you that the light is about to turn red. When you see the light turn yellow, stop if there's enough time to do so safely. It's not legal to enter the intersection after the light turns red. When the light turns green, cross traffic that entered on a yellow light may still be in the intersection. Wait until any vehicles or pedestrians are out of the way before you proceed. Besides signal lights, there are turn arrows. Green arrows indicate a protected turn. That means other traffic stops for you. After checking that cross traffic and pedestrians have cleared the intersection, you can turn when the light is green. If there is no arrow, obey the signal light and wait for oncoming traffic to clear before proceeding. If you have a green arrow on a right turn, again, you have the right of way. You do not need to stop if the intersection is clear and it is safe to turn, even if the lights for the through direction are red. At most intersections, you can make a right turn on a red light after making a complete stop. Stop behind the line first, then slowly pull ahead to check for traffic. This is also true for multiple lane right turns. Be sure to remain in the same lane you start from. Sometimes you cannot turn right on a red light. Whenever there's a sign or a red turn arrow, wait for a green light before turning right. A few other things you should know about signal lights. Flashing yellow lights means slow down but don't stop. Watch for cars on either side and enter cautiously. Flashing red lights or no lights at all, as in a power outage, are the same as a stop sign controlled intersection. Be sure you come to a complete stop and follow the same right of way rules. In congested traffic, Make sure you can get all the way through the intersection before entering. You can get a ticket if you block traffic in an intersection after the light in your direction turns red. Why don't we turn right up ahead? Okay. I'll have to move over to the right lane first. I'm glad you checked your mirrors. But don't forget to look over your shoulder. There's a blind spot on each side of the car that doesn't show up in the mirrors. To change lanes safely, put your turn indicator on first. Then, check your mirror in the direction you want to go. Next, look over your shoulder in the same direction. If it's clear, then ease over into the next lane. Follow this pattern every time you change lanes including center turn lanes, bike lanes, leaving the curb, and merging into another lane when your lane ends. Whenever you make a lane change, traffic already in that lane has the right of way. And be sure to change lanes one lane at a time.
What should I do for this right turn? First, use your signal and start to slow down. Look over your right shoulder for bicycles or motorcycles, and then move into the bike lane when it's clear. Scan to the left and right, then make your turn when it's safe. On left turns, signal, look over your left shoulder, and move into the left center turn lane first, if there is one. Then, make your turn when it's safe. If only one lane can turn left in your direction, you can choose any lane to end your turn in. If there are two or more designated turn lanes, then stay in the lane you started in. For right turns, stay in the lane you start in, whether there's one or more designated turn lanes. Oops, I missed the turn. Not a problem. Let's make a U-turn. Okay. I'm never sure when that's legal. There's a few do's and don'ts. Make sure you have good visibility to see traffic ahead of you. In residential areas or where signs are posted, you can make a U-turn anytime it's safe. Business districts and divided highways require you to be a little more selective. U-turns are okay in these areas as long as there's an intersection or a place to turn and no signs prohibit. In addition to places that are posted for no U-turns, it's also illegal to make a U-turn whenever you'd have to cross a curb, a strip of land, double-double lines, or when you're in front of a fire station. There's some pedestrians up ahead. Yeah, it looks like they want to cross. I'd better stop. I'm proud of you. Pedestrians have the right-of-way at crosswalks and at intersections, marked or unmarked. If you see a person who looks like they want to cross, you should stop. Once they step off the curb, you must stop. And be careful when you see a car stopped at a crosswalk. Someone you can't see may be crossing. There's a few other right-of-way situations you should know about. When an emergency vehicle has its lights on, you must move to the far right side of the road and stop. If you are already in an intersection, continue through and then pull to the right and stop as soon as you can. Emergency vehicles often use the wrong side of the road to continue, so stay stopped until it is passed. Then it's a lane change, so signal, check your mirrors, and look over your shoulder. When it's safe, pull into the driving lane again. School buses with flashing red lights mean that children are exiting the bus and you are required to stop no matter what side of the road you are on. If you are on the opposite side of a raised barrier, this does not apply. Why don't we stop for a bite to eat? Sounds good. There's a place up ahead. Where's a good place to park? The color of the curb is important. White is for loading or unloading passengers. Yellow is for loading passengers or freight. Green is for limited time parking. Blue is only for persons with a disabled placard or license plate. Red is no parking or stopping anytime. Don't park if there is a no parking sign, in front of a fire hydrant, in an intersection, on a crosswalk, a sidewalk, in front of a driveway, near a railroad track, or on the wrong side of the street. Oh, finally, here's a spot. I thought we'd never find one. But remember, you are parking on a hill. To be sure your car doesn't roll into the street if the brakes fail or someone hits you, follow these rules. If you're going downhill, turn your front wheels into the curb or toward the side of the road. If you're going uphill, turn the front wheels away from the curb and roll back until the wheels gently touch the curb. If there is no curb, whether you're parking uphill or downhill, turn your wheels so the car will roll away from the center of the road. 
always set the brake. So, how's the strip coming? I'm just taking some notes so I don't forget anything. You've been pretty quiet back there. Oh, I've got lots of good footage. It's gonna be hard to fit this all into one video. Well, there's more. You mean we haven't covered everything? You've gone over the main rules of the road, but examiners also look at what you do while you're driving. Driving behavior is a part of what determines the outcome of the test. Can you show us that too? We've already started. You're showing us something right now? It's important never to drive while you're tired or if you're impaired for any reason. You've been on the road a long time. I can tell you needed a break. So, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go for a drive. Scanning is one of the most important driving techniques. There are lots of things you need to be aware of. Pedestrians, lane markings, road signs, other vehicles, and hazards. Always look in different directions to see what's around you. Look for everything. Lane markings provide some information, but road signs are important too. Wow, there's a lot to take in. Makes me a little nervous. Don't worry. Good scanning actually gives you more control. You can be more confident that you have time to see what's going on and react quickly to changes. When you look ahead, look 10 to 15 seconds down the road. That lets you see potential hazards while you still have plenty of time to react. You're looking into your future while you still have time to do something about it. Looking side to side lets you know where other cars are around you. You never know when you might need a way out to avoid an accident. At intersections, check for side traffic. Just because you have the right of way doesn't mean that other people will always stop. And when you slow down, check to make sure that the person behind you sees that you're slowing down. If they don't, it's better to miss your turn than be involved in a collision. One of the best ways to avoid an accident is to let other drivers know what you're going to do before you do it. Use your turn signals. Every time you make a turn, merge into traffic, change lanes, or pull out from a curb. Signal about five seconds ahead of time. When making a turn, be careful not to put your signal on too soon, especially if there's an intersection or driveway between you and where you're going to turn. Someone might think you're turning sooner than you really are. Likewise, don't pull out in front of a car just because its signal is on. It may be turning beyond you, or the driver may have forgotten to turn the signal off. Freeway merging can be difficult, or quite simple. The trick is to accelerate to match the speed of traffic that you're merging into. Be sure you signal, check your mirror, and look over your shoulder. Look for an open space. If you're going at or near the speed of traffic, it's usually not too hard to pull ahead or move back to merge into an open space. You look a little tense. I don't think the guy in front of me knows what he's doing. If you keep a safe following distance, you'll feel more comfortable, that you're in control, so you can enjoy the drive. Okay. How far should I be? Try the three-second rule. Pick out a mark on the road up ahead, like a sign or a guardrail. Wait for the car in front of you to cross, then count. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. If you get to three before you pass the mark, then there's usually enough room between you and the other car. The nice thing about the three-second rule is it works at any speed. 
However, when visibility is poor or the road is wet, then increase the count to four or five seconds. <sighs> oh yes, much better. This road is getting awfully narrow. We got a bicyclist up ahead too. And a big truck coming towards us. This is gonna be a tight squeeze. Your margin for error is pretty small here. The safest thing to do is deal with them one at a time. How do I do that? Just ease up off the gas and slow down a bit. That way the truck will pass you first before you get to the bicyclist. Then you can move to the left to give the bicyclist more room, but stay in your own lane. That worked well. But now there's kids on one side and cars on the other. No way to avoid this. Now split the difference. Steer a middle course between the two. But kids pose the greater danger. You don't know when they might make a sudden move. So slow down and give them a little more room. Now we're stuck behind a truck. He's going awfully slow. Do you see the orange triangle? That indicates a slow moving vehicle. He's probably going as fast as he can. Maybe if I honk, he'll pull over. Not a good idea. It's only legal to use your horn to avoid an accident. Do I have enough room to pass? Passing is very dangerous. You need at least a third of a mile of visibility. If you can't see that far, always assume another car is coming. A slow moving vehicle must pull over at the first available turnout if five or more cars are behind it. If you have any doubt about passing, it's best to wait. If you know there's enough space, make sure you signal, look in your mirrors, and over your shoulder before you pass. And make sure there's enough space between you and the car you passed before you return to your lane. When you can see both headlights of the car behind you in your mirror, then there's enough room to pull back over. It's starting to sprinkle. Be sure to turn your headlights on. Don't you mean wipers? That too. But whenever you use your wipers, your headlights must also be on. It's good to use headlights anytime it gets dark, such as in fog conditions, heavy cloud cover, or when it's snowing. Headlights can also be a lifesaver on small country or mountain roads. Even in bright sunlight, they make you more visible to other drivers and could prevent a head-on collision. High beams improve visibility when it's really dark. Use them whenever it's legal, but be sure to dim them down whenever another vehicle approaches or when you're behind someone. High beams don't work in the fog or rain. They just make things worse. hard to see. The fog's rolling in. It's a good time to slow down. Lots of accidents happen because people don't adjust their driving to adverse conditions. If you can't see 100 feet in front of you, it's not safe to drive faster than 30 miles per hour. When the roads are wet or slippery, increase your following distance too. At night, even with clear visibility, slow down a little and keep in mind that pedestrians and some vehicles like motorcycles are harder to see. Don't look directly into oncoming headlights. It helps your vision to look toward the right edge of your lane. Sometimes the terrain creates a poor visibility situation. Steep hills and sharp curves are dangerous. You just don't know what's coming around the bend. Driving just a little slower gives you the ability to take evasive action if you need to. Nice drive. You did well. Thanks. My head is swimming from all the information. My camcorder's full. Good timing. I'd like to see your video when it's done. Sure thing. That was a good lesson. I'm ready for my driving test. When could I take one? We need to get you an appointment first. 
Sandy, can you get on the internet from here? I think so. Let's give it a try. Okay, we're on. Brandon, go to the DMV website. Select appointments. Then, behind the wheel driving test appointments. Now you can choose the office you want to go to and get the first available date. Oh, you even do tests on Saturdays. Cool. Let's see. I'll pick this office. Looks like I'm all set for next week. Great. We'll see you then. And in the meantime, here's something for you to review. This will help you with the test. Thanks. I'll use it. Thanks for all you've done. This is a really great experience. Yeah, it's awesome. Well, I'm glad you both enjoyed it. Remember to drive safely. Bye. Bye.